Hi, I'm Davis Freeman. I was an early, early for me, friend of John's. We were two like wild and crazy guys in the 70s, but really not, because I'm not too wild or crazy, and I think John was less so. But <laughs> we really liked a lot of things in common. And uh, particularly going down to the Two Bells Tavern, having some beers and uh, hamburgers and talking about photography or art. I've heard it said here that John uh, had a foundation in science. And uh, I think he did. He, he w always understood these in-depth things, where I had more of a foundation in the arts, but I loved science. So I would see things he did and went, wow, how'd you do that? And he would explain it to me, and I wouldn't always understand, but I enjoyed the process. One of the things, I'm a portrait photographer, primarily known for that anyway. This is John, uh, right early 80s. And at the time, he had a project, and he was going down to where the, the uh, kingdom is now or was in that area, that industrial area. And he was photographing s sides of building where there was no available light, no street lights, no moon lights, no sun lights. So we'd go down there late at night. And I didn't understand that, because I go, I go and I see, if you're in the dark, I can't see you. And he explained to me, and I hadn't had any photo lessons before that. I went on to get a degree in it. But humans have rods and cones. The cones are what give us uh, color. Why we don't see color at night is because of the rods. Rods allow us to see in really low light situations, but they are not receptive to color. So that's why things get black and white kind of as you go darker. And when you get really dark, you see nothing. Film, on the other hand, is, is color. And if you can, what John would do would take, I recall this a long time ago, either four to eight minute exposures on his tripod of a side of a building. Now this building has a lot of light on it, so this is my picture. And he, he created these gorgeous nighttime shots of an industrial area. Well, I took him down there one night and I said, I'm gonna do my picture. So he's lit by a street lamp and a clock lamp and stuff, et cetera. Uh, but it was so dark that I realized <laughs> I cut off his feet. I couldn't see through the, I used the Hasselblad. Uh, I couldn't see through the viewfinder well. Anyway, so I think I can do this. Okay, at the same time, I had a, I was at the UW, I was gonna be a psychologist. And I really discovered that photography is what I loved. But I was there for a year or two. And I took, what is the paper for the UW called? The, the Daily. So I became a daily photographer for the first time. And I loved it, just going around and photographing things. And one of the things I loved was the market. And I was required to create, uh, uh, create a, a series of pictures of something. And I chose the market. So I came down here in 75. And the market had just been saved by Steinbrook. Is that right, Steinbrook? Steinbrook, thank you. And so I just went around and asked people to take pictures. And I threw this one in. First of all, you see beards were, beards were around 40 years ago, young guys. Uh, and the price, this is the market's vice tea place. It's still here. And the price for a pound, a pound of tea was $3.85. Now, if you don't drink tea, it's like between $30 and $100 a pound. And, and the, the uh, yeah, anyway. So these guys worked there. And I, and I was, this was for my assignment. So I found these kind of cool, uh, poems or statements by people I liked, and it was really amateurish. But the images are great. The images were great. Here's another. This, this is a lady barber. She was in her 80s, and, and she was right kind of below us, right over here. She had her place, and this was her. I, I don't recall what she did with all that honey and yogurt. <laughs> she might have slicked the hair back, you know? <laughs> yeah. But. And then right upstairs, this is all in this, you know her? No. I'd love to know her, what happened to her. Thank you. Uh, she was part of a communal, uh, communal community that had a uh, cafeteria, no, no, a, a restaurant right down here. And I'd go in there for bacon and eggs. Hmm? Yeah, what, what, what's the name? What's, ma'am? What's the name? What are you saying? Oh, you're guessing? Soup and salad. Oh, it might have been soup and salad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, and then finally, in the same place, was this guy, and his name is Artemis the Spoon, Spoon Man. You know, I figured he might. So I sent this to him about six or eight months ago. I hadn't seen him, and I found it. And this, was, this is a book that I made for my instructor. And I sent it to him, and he laughed and joked and wrote back. But he was a character. That's what interests me about the market. They were characters. And then John came along with this thing called the Wide Lux. And he was saying, I'm doing this new toy. Let me show you what I'm working on. And he would show me these pictures. And I thought it was pretty cool. So at the time, John was not working for the university, but I was. I ended up being the university's photographer. And when John got his job, I'm just don't tell anybody. Back in the early, early 90s, I was so covetous of his job because it was the best job on campus for photographers. <laughs> I forget the guy, Han something was the guy that uh, had the position before John. And he, as I recall, they asked for him to come and apply. Someone did. But he had, I, that was a great job in architecture, I, although mine wasn't bad. But so I bought a lot of uh, Wide Lux for the university. I took a lot of university Wide Lux pictures. Unfortunately, the university owns them. So I have none of those to show you. However, I'm going to show you. I'm talking kind of fast because we're on a time limit. Uh, if you're interested, this is what the back of the, uh, I took 35 millimeter film. It used about a frame and a half of film. If, I'll read this to you. It says, 11 pictures by the 35 millimeter standard. There's 20 exposures and 21 pictures by the 35 millimeter millimeter standard of 36 exposures are usually the limits. So you can get about 21 wide lux pictures out of a roll of 36. So I was told to give you all a little lesson about this. I'm trying to make it easy. All right. So uh, it was great and phenomenal. John went on to do you know, what he did. And I kind of put it down because the university couldn't, didn't want to use it or couldn't use it, couldn't see how to use it. And they still have that camera. So, but I wanted to throw this up for you guys. This says 1958, where the circle is. That's the year of the cameras that John and I and other people used. It was made, it was made in uh, Japan. But they were making cameras as far back as 1840, wide lux cameras as far back as 1843. And what you're seeing here, all that, uh, those years, are different years that different wide lux cameras were introduced to the public. Yeah, cool. Any questions? I'm good for questions. Yeah, we're all going to do wide lux next. OK. All right. So this, is, this was the deal about the wide lux. Yeah. So John did a, a marvelous job of, of the images in here. And when we were both working for the campus, I remember, you may, you probably all know this, he, he got these, the new stadium falling. And I don't know if you know the story, but he was on his bicycle and just going someplace. And he went, oh my gosh, someone, some people were running. And he stopped and he just started taking pictures. He tried to sell them to UPI, AP. No one would buy them. You know why? They said, how many people died? Zero. Not important. I remember him telling me that. And then he was around when uh, Hammering Man fell. And he was there when the kingdom imploded. So he became known, in his mind or to me, as what did he call himself? The, uh, not the destructive photographer. Catastrophe. What's that? Catastrophe. The catastrophe photographer, something like that. Yeah. So all right, now go, we're going to talk a little bit about how to make a panorama camera. Later today, we're going to be doing tours. And if anyone's interested, I'll walk around with people. I don't have a wide lux. You don't have a wide lux. But you probably all have smartphones. And you can get a, you can get a, wide, you can get a wide angle or panoramic uh, app if you want. Yeah, 360. I don't, that, they do. You're absolutely right. So when film went away, which was very sad for me, Oh, I can. I ask if people could hear me. Yes, I can do that. Better? Oh, OK. Oh, no, we should say something. Sorry. That's OK. This is in New Zealand. And this was one of the first panorama shots I did without using a wide lux, using my camera. And you, 
kind of could stitch it together in your, in your Photoshop or in your, whatever you use. And it kind of came out like this. Now you could keep working at it and make it look smooth. But that was one of the first, and that was pretty bad. Then I got something called the Auto Stitch app. This comes in, and you can get this with your iPhone and probably any camera. And then it created this. So the above is, uh, is in South Louisiana after Katrina. It's my home state. The bottom is another shot of uh, uh, New, uh, New Zealand. The top one I worked on a lot. The bottom one, not so much. New York from Brooklyn on the top. And that was just one swipe on my iPhone. That one? Three months ago. Yeah, this is new. It's kind of jumping because I don't, I'm trying to stay within my 20 minutes. The bottom one, I just show it in because this was a commission by some people who didn't want to rip out their wall to have this view on their houseboat. So they hired me. I, shot, I, bought, I rented a Hasselblad camera that created 260 megabyte images for every snap. 260 megabytes. That has 24, mega, 24 images in each one. They stitched it together. It was, a, it was a gigabyte, a terabyte of image when we were done. And now it's on a wall. But How big is the wall? Uh, 22 by 9. Uh, 22 by 9 feet. Feet, feet. Feet. Nine in, nine, nine. I throw this in because uh, this is Jeff Bridges. He uses the wide lux, and I understood that. I don't know if he and John spoke, but I know they knew of each other. And so uh, he's using. You know, he was. What he did was were kind of were selfies. Here, here he is, you know, and he's holding the camera, and it's going like this. Uh, <laughs> the Big Lebowski, if you don't know, this is great, holding it up. And this one I just thought was pretty, you know, pretty shot. And then finally, I, I end with this. So this was about four years ago. I took these shots of, of the market from across the street. I took it in to my, to my uh, apps and such, and I created this, made this out of it. And it was not too hard, but there it was. So you start here, and you can end up there pretty easily.